great. Will all non-council employees, non-council employees, please leave the main floor of the chambers. There's additional seating upstairs in the balcony. Thank you. May everyone please have their seats. May we close the doors and, clo and clear the aisles. <clears throat> All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. All rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Roll call. Adams. Present. Amprey Samuel. Present. Ayala. Aye. I'm sorry, here. <laughs> Barron. Present. Borelli. Brannon. Here. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Here. Cohen. Here. Constantinides. Present. Carnegie. Deutsch. Diaz. Drum. Here. Espinal. Here. Eugene. Gibson. Here. Jonai. Present. Rudenchik. Here. Holden. Here. Kalos. Here. King. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Lanceman. Lander. Here. Levin. Carnegie. Here. Levine. Here. Mizell. Here. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. Moya. Here. Perkins. Here. Powers. Here. Reynoso. Richards. Present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Here. Rose. Here. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Valone. Here. Van Bramer. Here. Williams. Here. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. Combo. Speaker Johnson. Here. All quiet in the chambers, please. All rise for the invocation. Today we have some members of the Bronx clergy, Minister Rodolfo Giles, Deacon Barry Parker, Pastor Dr. Sidney Hargrave, Dr. Rabbi Keith Elijah Thompson, and they are led today by the, in the invocation by Pastor Jay Gooding of Miracle Revival Temple, Kojic, at 1555 McCombs Road in the Great Borough of the Bronx. Quiet in the chamber. Can we just give the Lord a hand clap this morning? Amen. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. First, we thank thee for allowing us a brand new day, a brand new year, and a brand new mercy. As we celebrated Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Day, I pray that our spirit of unity be exemplified, be magnified in this city, in this country, and in this state. 
As we invoke your presence upon this council and these chambers, we pray your blessings and their governing of our great city. We ask you to continue to grant your favor and wisdom upon our public advocate, Letitia James, our new speaker, Corey Johnson, the third and second term council members, as well as our newly elected members that have the awesome task and responsibility of being our policy makers. Grant them the knowledge and wisdom to make policies that are fair and just for us all. I pray that you would also bind us together in the spirit of oneness. Help us to always walk in a common unity that will allow us always to be a community. A community that where there is darkness become beams to shine bright lights. A community that where there is despair will transcend a spirit of hope. A community that where there is diversity can be the epitome of unity. A community that where there is hate can embrace the spirit of love. A community that where there may be grudges can replace feelings with generosity. A community that even when we don't agree, never become disenchanted and disagreeable. I pray that from these chambers, every person of every borough be served with justice, righteousness, dignity, and liberty for all. In closing, I pray that as prayer and planning is made in these chambers, that your peace and purpose be manifested in this city. These things we ask in your name and for your sake. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A motion to spread the invocation in full upon the record. I now call Councilmember Vanessa Gibson. Thank you very much, Madam Public Advocate. Good afternoon, Mr. Speaker, and to all of my colleagues and guests who are joining with us. I am so honored to join with our distinguished public advocate in recognizing an incredible and distinguished group of Bronx clergy, members of our clergy representing Bronx County, Minister Rodolfo Giles, our board chairman, Deacon Barry Parker, Pastor Dr. Sidney Hargrave, Dr. Rabbi Keith Elijah Thompson, and certainly the man who has given us the invocation today, my good friend, Superintendent, and Pastor J. Allen Gooding Sr. I have the honor of working with Pastor Gooding. He's a native New Yorker. He was born and bred in the great borough of the Bronx, uh, educated in our public school system, and certainly he is the pastor of two churches in the Bronx, not one, but two. The Fellowship Tabernacle Church of God of Christ, located in the northeast section of the Bronx, as well as Miracle Revival Temple Church of God in Christ, located in our district in the hybrid section on McCombs Road. And for all the years I've been in the city council and certainly previously serving in the state assembly, Pastor Gooding has been an incredible friend. He's been an advocate. He's been a champion, a leader, teacher, and a preacher. He's been someone both personally and professionally that I could always come to who's always been there. Certainly his ministry has grown throughout the years. And in addition, his church has partnered with our distinguished Bronx District Attorney, Darcel Clark. In 2016, we hosted a gun buyback program at his church in the Northeast Bronx where we collected 99 guns to take off of our streets. And that's an incredible honor and certainly Pastor Gooding will continue to work with us. As the superintendent in the Church of God and of Christ, he oversees these two churches and currently serves as the vice chairman of Eastern New York's Urban and Civic Affairs Department for the church. In addition, he's been the clergy liaison, working very closely with the NYPD for 16 years, both with the 49th precinct in the Pelham Bay section of the Bronx, as well as serving as the clergy coalition of the 44th precinct in our district. He's also served with distinction as a member of the Bronx Borough President's Clergy Task Force, and today he currently serves as the president of the Clergy Council of the 49 precinct. Many, many titles, and in addition, Pastor Gooding is also the director of community outreach at Jacoby Hospital with our organization called Standing Up to Violence, also called SUV. This is part, and this council is no stranger, to our cure violence and crisis management work. And SUV has been an incredible fabric and foundation in our community in working with at-risk youth, getting them off the streets, giving them an opportunity to be success stories and not statistics, taking guns out of their hands and giving them jobs. And in addition to all of those titles, the one title that I am grateful for Pastor Gooding is he has been a friend. 
He has been consistent. He has stood with us in the trenches. He has walked the streets of the Bronx with us. Whenever a family has lost a loved one due to violence, Pastor Gooding and all of the clergy members have been with us, praying for families, giving them support and the resources they need to deal with the traumatic experience of being involved in gun violence. And I wanna thank him. He is a husband of 26 years to his wife, First Lady Nicole Stacy. He is the father of four children, the grandfather of seven, and he's also a PK. He's a preacher's kid. He is the son of the late Bishop Caesar Gooding and the son of our evangelist at the church, our mother Josephine Gooding, and I'm just so honored that he's here, and I want to thank all of the clergy that have joined Pastor Gooding, because in times of turbulence, in times of strength, we always go back to the church. The church has always been our sanctuary, it's always been our foothold, it's always been our source of strength and encouragement. And certainly on the cusp of recognizing the 89th birthday of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., what better time than this to come together in the spirit of togetherness and fellowship. And I want to thank Pastor Gooding and certainly Madam Public Advocate, please ask you to welcome Pastor Gooding and all of the distinguished members of the Bronx clergy to our chamber and thank you, Pastor, for your prayer over our proceedings. May God bless you and keep you. I love you and appreciate you. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Councilmember, and we thank you, Pastor, and we thank uh, the members of the delegation from the Bronx. Thank you so much. Adoption of minutes, Councilmember Chin. Motion that the minutes of the stated meeting of November 30th, 2017, and December 11, 2017, be adopted as printed. Thank you. Thank you. Messages and papers from the mayor. None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. M7, OMB withdrawal. Uh, received, ordered, printed, and filed. Preconsidered M8, transferring city funds between agencies. Uh, finance. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call ups. Quiet in your chambers, please. M9 through M11, various applications. Uh, coupled on a call up vote. And I would now like to a roll call vote on all land use call ups. Shh. Adams. Aye. Amprey Samuel. Aye. Ayala. Aye. Barron. Borelli. Aye. Brannon. Aye. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. Aye. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. Aye. Carnegie. Aye. Deutsch. Aye. Diaz. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Aye. Eugene. Gibson. Aye. Diaz. Diaz. Jonai. Aye. Gorenchik. Aye. Holden. Aye. Kalos. Aye. King. Present and I. Ku. Aye. Kozlowitz. Aye. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. Aye. Levin. Levine. Aye. Mizell. Yes. Nanchaka. Aye. Miller. Moya. Yes. Perkins. Yes. Powers. Aye. Reynoso. Aye. Richards. Aye. Rivera, Aye. Rodriguez, Aye. Rose, Aye. Rosenthal, Aye. Salamanca, Aye. Torres, Aye. Traeger, Aye. Ulrich, Aye. Valone, Aye. Van Bramer, Aye. Williams, Jaeger. Aye. Matteo. Aye. Combo. Speaker Johnson. Aye. Uh, good afternoon. Before you have to read the vote, sorry. Today's land use call ups are adopted by a vote of 45 in the affirmative, zero in the negative. Quiet in the chambers, please, as we now hear. 
from the speaker, Corey Johnson. Uh, good afternoon. Before we begin, I'd like to recognize the passing of a hero here in New York City, Lieutenant Joe Stash. Before becoming a lieutenant, Joe was a firefighter when he bravely risked his life on September 11th, 2001. Joe succumbed to 9-11 related illness last week. I also would like to take a moment and recognize the loss of one of the most important figures in the history against the fight of HIV and AIDS. Founder of the American Foundation for AIDS Research, AMFAR, Dr. Matilda Krim devoted her life to ending HIV and AIDS and inspired countless others to do the same. From early days of the AIDS epidemic when fear, misinformation, and discrimination abounded, she raised public awareness about the epidemic and generated funds for medical research that helped lead to life-saving treatments. As an HIV-positive man who has been living with the virus for over 13 years, I know that I likely would not be alive today without the efforts of Dr. Matilda Krim. I met her during my first trip to New York City at the age of 18. I was seated next to her at a Hetrick Martin Institute dinner. Little did I know the important role that she would ultimately play in my life. My thoughts and prayers go out to the family and friends of Dr. Krim. Her legacy will live on in the countless lives that she saved. If folks could stand, I'd like to take a moment of silence in honor of Lieutenant Joe Stash from the FDNY. Please rise. And Dr. Krim and their families. Thank you all. Please be seated. So jumping into our docket for the day, uh, today we're voting to extend the fiscal year 2019 preliminary budget as we begin this session with our newly minted finance chair, uh, Danny Drum. I look forward to working, yes. I look forward to working with all of our colleagues in securing a smart and responsible budget for the city of New York during these uh, difficult, challenging financial times. I want to make this council a strong, independent body, and we will do that uh, today by increasing resources for council members and their offices. Every member deserves this, their staff deserves it, and I, I'm proud that we're doing that today as well. Uh, that completes the highlights of our docket, and I look forward to proceeding with today's vote. That ends communication from the speaker. Discussion of general orders. Seeing none, report of special committees. None. Report of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Finance, pre-considered intro one, budget extender. A couple on general orders with a message of necessity. Pre-considered M8 in resolution two, transfer of city funds. Couple on general orders. On the general order calendar resolution, appointing various persons, commissioner of deeds. A couple on general orders, and I would now ask for roll call vote on all items on the general order calendar. Quiet the chambers, please. Adams. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. First of all, I would like to thank you, Madam Public Advocate, Speaker Corey Johnson, and all of my colleagues for attending my inaugural on Sunday. It was an amazing feeling to get the texts, the phone calls, and the bodies in the room to support me. My family was over the moon, and so was I. With that, I vote aye on all. Congratulations. Ampri Samuel. Aye on all. Ayala. Aye on all. Barron. I vote aye on all. Borelli. Aye on all. Brannon. Aye all. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. Aye on all. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. Aye on all. Carnegie. Aye on all. Deutsch. Diaz. Gracias. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Aye on all. Eugene. Gibson. Aye on all. Jonai. Aye on all. Korenchik. Aye. Holden. Mm -hmm. Aye. Kalos. Aye on all. King. Aye on all. Ku. Aye on all. Kozlowitz. Aye on all. 
Lentzman. Aye. Lander. Aye. Levin. Aye on all. Levine. Aye on all. Mizell. Yes. Menchaca. Aye on all. Miller. Hold aye. Moya. Perkins. Powers. Aye on all. Reynoso. Richards. Aye. Rivera. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. <laughs> so I want to take this opportunity to recognize the passing of an icon and pillar of my district and of the Lower East Side, Adela Fargas. Adela was the proud founder and owner of Casa Adela, which is an alphabet city institution that doesn't just serve the best Puerto Rican food in the city, but a place that since 1976 has provided a piece of home for so many Puerto Ricans and New Yorkers of Puerto Rican descent, including myself. So I, I just had her rice and beans this past Friday ordering my usual, uh, but I did not realize this would be the last time that Adela would occupy her seat at the back of the restaurant. So you see, Adela was a grandmother for our community, our, you know, our abuela, and whether it was with her amazing food, just good conversation, she always had a knack for making people feel as if they were with family back on the island. I even remember going with my family and friends to Casa Adela, not just for the food, but also for the chance just to see her. She was a proud supporter of a free and thriving Puerto Rico, and it always, she was always willing to cook for those who were fighting for the movement. But most importantly, Adela was someone who brought people together and made Loi Saida what it was and what it is today. I just want to extend my sincerest condolences to Adela's family, to her children, Abigail and Luis, and to her grandchildren. I ask that we just take a very brief moment of silence to honor, honor Loi Saida's grandmother, someone that I and all of our community will miss so dearly. Quiet in the chambers, a moment of silence, please. Thank you. May she and rest in peace. Thank you. Rodriguez. Rose. Aye. Rosenthal. Aye. Aye and all. Salamanca. Aye and all. Torres. Aye and all. Traeger. I just want to commend this. Uh, Permission to briefly explain my vote? Yes, sir. Thank you. I just want to commend the speaker for recognizing the, the real need to uh, increase uh, uh, pay and a lot in our staff salaries. Uh, this is a real need in the council uh, to retain quality folks who work so hard to give them themselves, and I just want to commend the speaker for recognizing that and, and keeping his commitments as, as well. So I, I probably vote aye and all. Thank you. Ulrich. Yes. Valone. Aye and all. Van Bramer. Aye and all. Williams. Aye. Jaeger. Aye. Matteo. Aye. Combo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye. All items on today's general order calendar were adopted by a vote of 49 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions. And there is a revised land use call-ups. They were adopted by a vote of 49 uh, in the affirmative and zero negative. Introduction and reading of bills. All items have been referred to committee as indicated on the agenda. We do not have any resolutions this afternoon, and we will, be, we will begin with um, general discussions, beginning with Councilmember Rodriguez. Thank you. First of all, I would like to thank all my colleagues who expressed their support as we were standing for the rights of rabbit to a state in the United States. Today at 4 p.m., his case will be heard today in Brooklyn. We don't have much expectation of any new changes, but his lawyer, they're doing the best they can, and a decision will be made in the city of New York in Ravi who will stand not only for himself, but for millions of undocumented Americans, will be granted the opportunity to reopen his case to stay in the United States. I encourage all my colleagues to continue fighting not only for us, but for those millions of undocumented individuals that no one asks them for their immigration status when they spend billions of dollars buying in Target's Marshall in all the big stores. However, we don't allow them to have their opportunity 
to live in peace in this nation. So with that, I'd like to again express my thank you to all my colleagues that have been supporting me in these few days. Thank you. Council Member Cumbo? Council Member Barron. Uh, thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Just want to remind us of Dr. Martin Luther King. And when I think of Dr. King, I think about the radical King, not the passive, mild King that brought his message of a dream, but the radical King who the government saw as the most dangerous person in America because he refused to be silent, because he had boldness to call out things that were unjust and to challenge this country to do better. Dr. Cornell West describes him as the black, prophetic, traditional minister with fire in his bones, love in his heart, light in his mind, and courage in his soul. So I just want to say that as we've gone through a lot of ceremonies and recognized the contributions and the sacrifices of his life, that we look at him in the totality of who he was and that he was not afraid to call this country out for all of those things that he said were injustices and to call on us to be revolutionaries. I invite you to read his book, and I invite you to read Dr. Cornell West's book, The Radical Dr. King. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Williams. Thank you. Uh, I first want to associate myself with uh, Council Member Barron's words. It is a, actually an awesome book. Uh, too often we try to sanitize who Dr. King was. Uh, he was a revolutionary. He was an agitator. He disrupted the norm. Uh, it is weird to me, as I heard people talking about what happened to Udonis and I and why we were out there at the same, at one side of their mouth and in the second side of their mouth celebrating uh, Dr. King Day. If you do not understand why people were out there fighting for Ravi, fighting for Jean Montreveau, fighting for uh, moral immigration standards, uh, you do not understand who Dr. King was, what he was trying to do, the methods he used. Uh, Nonviolence should not be confused with being docile. Um, I do want to speak briefly on what happened uh, with myself and Councilman Udonis. First of all, thank you for all of the texts and the well wishes that I received. I really appreciate it. I do want to say thank you particularly to uh, Speaker Johnson, who was out there with us, who spoke up for us, uh, and didn't mince any words about what he saw. Uh, thank you very much. I thank uh, our Public Safety Chair, Council Member Richards, uh, for his words, and Council Member uh, Torres for agreeing uh, that we should look into what happened. I have particular questions about the instructions that were given uh, to the officers about where they thought they were going into, and I have additional questions about if, when, and how the NYPD or other agencies of the city will uh, assist ICE, uh, because that was what was happening that day. We have further court, we have further knowledge about even after that particular incident, further assistance that we're giving. These are questions that I'm hoping also to ask the mayor and the commissioner. Uh, as of yet, they have not reached out to me, so I haven't had the opportunity to do that. I will say the last time something has happened to me uh, with another administration, I at least got the respect of that call. Uh, I am looking forward to talking about this a little more with Council Member Rodriguez tomorrow at 6 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Ulrich. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. I, I just want to rise for a moment and uh, recognize the passing of a giant in Queens. Uh, maybe unfamiliar to many of my colleagues, but certainly not unfamiliar to many of my colleagues, especially Councilmember uh, Kozlowitz and Barry Gradenchik, uh, who had the pleasure of knowing Ms. Maria Thompson, uh, who led the Woodhaven Business Improvement District and also the Greater Woodhaven Development Corporation for well over 30 years. She was also a longtime member of Community Board 9. Uh, I think one of the original members, she started out when they were community planning boards. She was a uh, very proud of that, very involved with the uh, local precinct community council and uh, a, a longtime resident, lifelong New Yorker and longtime resident of, uh, of Woodhaven, Queens. Her heart and soul was really dedicated to the betterment uh, of her community and uh, she always did so with a smile. She was a friend to many and she died somewhat suddenly last week. Uh, Councilmember Kozlowitz and I had to, ha were able to attend her wake and there was just an overflowing of mourning but also um, support and, and good stories about all of the wonderful things that Maria Thompson did for her community and for the borough of Queens. She loved Queens, she loved the city of New York, 
and uh, she will be missed. She was a giant. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. May she rest in peace. And lastly, Council Member Kalos, unless there are others. Others. Some of you may notice the uh, pin on my lapel. It's the fashion accessory of the uh, season, and it's in support of uh, paid parental leave. Mayor de Blasio, almost two years ago, uh, said that New York City would join other progressive cities like Austin and Pittsburgh in providing municipal workers with paid parent, uh, parental leave. Uh, unfortunately, this has not materialized for our teachers. I, for one, would like to say that uh, should I be blessed to have a child, I plan to take parental leave. I hope that those in this body who have had kids have taken it or will take it. And we need to make sure that we make it available to our teachers. So I hope that you will join me in uh, wearing this pin and supporting the campaign to make sure that every single one of our municipal workers has access to paid parental leave as we expand it to the city as a whole. And I want to thank our public advocate, who I believe has been a champion on this issue as well. And I hope we can join together to support our parents. Thank you. Thank you. And lastly, Council Member Lander, I think. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Um, uh, you may not have noticed in the depths of Friday afternoon when the Mayor's Monuments Commission uh, released their report, um, that obviously contains some uh, partially contentious information. But one thing we, I think we can probably all agree on is the city could do a better job of telling all our histories. There are so many stories in this city uh, that are not on the map. The first Planned Parenthood clinic was in Brownsville, Brooklyn, but the building where it was was demolished, so it's not a landmark. There ought to be a marker. Uh, the draft riots, you know, a real dark moment in our history when 11 African Americans were lynched. Um, EJI, Equal Justice Initiative, Brian Stevenson's remarkable organization, is marking those all around the country. There's no marker in New York City. So uh, over the weekend, Council Member, uh, Majority Leader Combo and Council Member Van Bramer and I launched a website uh, and a new program, allourhistoriesnyc.com. I invite you to visit it and uh, suggest things that you think ought to be historic markers on the map in New York City. And we'll be reintroducing a bill we introduced last session, uh, which would authorize and direct the mayor and the administration to set up a program that puts all our histories on the map and in honor of King Day, I invite people to take a look at it and join us in the effort. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no one else, and now to close, our speaker, Speaker Corey Johnson. Today's meeting's adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>